put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost and Damned video game review. You are Johnny Clevitz, the vice president of the biker gang The Lost. You've been handling things for a while, but then the president, Billy Gray, comes back out of rehab and he does not like the state of affairs. He wants a return to independence and more macho culture, whereas Johnny is trying to make sure the business side of things run well and runs well. And he's a bit more pragmatic. Among other things, he helped form a truce with the rival gang, the Angels of Death. Now, others have already pointed out that the plot is... Actually, before that, I found the plot to be too straightforward. There are hardly any twists. It, it goes pretty much the way you'd expect it to. And without it really having the classic tragedy feel of the Grand Theft Auto 4 plot. Some have said that the storyline and ending are that the storyline is depressing and the ending is disappointing. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. I'd, I'd say the not only is the climax very middle of the road, it's also, it, it feels almost like a cheat. It's very contrived. And the, yeah, it, it really seemed like they just suddenly realized this is this has to be the ending and they wrote something on the fly. Now the plot runs parallel to the plot of four to the part to the point where two missions are pretty much just reused. Like there there are a few you might reach the mission area by a different path or leave you know, through a different path or so, but that's it. You're you're standing in the same places when you're shooting, and you fight your way through the the same way. It, yeah. Now, others have pointed out that the plot is too weak and cliche to be a main plot, and this does explain some of Orr's plot, but you don't need to know. The plot for to be able to follow this. Although, regardless of which of these you played before the other, some of the plot will be spoiled in part because of the these missions that are redone and plot. Yeah, plot that follows along. Now. Now, the, a lot of the characters are your brothers, the, your fellow bikers, and they, you know, they're the various types. There's the suck-up, there's the family man who's still a biker, they're, one of them's wheelchair-bound, you know, they, they have a strong bond, they will fist as a greeting. Uh, other characters include your druggy ex and a politician who follows. You start wondering if he actually has clothes and if he wears clothes because every time you, you meet him, he's like in a steam room or getting a massage or the like. And he is a lot more comfortable with his nudity than Johnny is. and. That did also that that was the source of some controversy, which is hilarious. The 
natural naked body. Yeah, never mind. And some characters from four are also present. There are a lot of badasses in the cast, especially some of these bikers. And Johnny himself is very badass. The voice acting is great, and the the dialogue is very witty. And it's not so much famous actors as much as just very distinct characters that are the focus. And some characters are, of course, offensive stereotypes. Now, as with Grand Theft Auto 4, I am going to try to focus on the positives, and that means covering multiplayer before much of anything else. Once again, it's not massively multiplayer, but there are both co-op and multiplayer modes. It takes place in the same city as single player, and it can be frantically fun. The... In fact, the multiplayer is... In the case of 4, it's a reason to buy the game, almost the reason to buy the game. In this case, I'm not sure I'd really say... I'll, I'll get into why, but... If, if you're buying one or the other, buy four. Now, there is some lag. Multiplayer comes with NPCs, traffic, police presence, respray shops. It's a lot like single player, just with some of the deeper features removed. And while some of that is true of a lot of recent multiplayer, this is actually a multiplayer that is as crazy as chaotic and fun as single player. We get a server list with filters and if you know if you're if you have a four seat car there can be a player in each of these four seats and all of them can fire their guns completely independently and in order to do that you hold down the enter key to enter as a passenger now, in multiplayer, you also do not move slow like you do in single player. Now, you can customize the player model, although there are not an awful lot of options to start with, four at the most. And while it's not the game's fault or the developer's, there are not a lot of players today, and that means you don't actually you don't really get access to more you know customization options. Where in four you start out with I guess all of them. There are like thirteen options for some of the yeah. Now customizing you can choose between a female model, a male model. You can't choose single player characters. This is all by the way going from what I managed to, you know, again, maybe you can unlock further, but yeah. And you can customize the head, the torso, legs, glasses, hats. Now, it's very much the kind of classic first person shooter, third person shooter with no loadouts. You, you know, pick up weapons that are you know like clearly marked on the minimap. It's it's one of the few times where the game gets very video game y and yeah so so very much classic shooter multiplayer there. And then you know this of course adds you know land vehicles, helicopters, boats, an open world city making for a really great multiplayer experience. Now, and you do all start with set guns, usually a pistol and or an SMG, possibly a melee weapon. You earn cash. There are player matches and ranked matches, and ranked matches are where you, or in them, you can level up, but I think I saw maybe one ranked match in all of the, yeah, all the times I tried playing it. Now there are 12 maps to choose from and they are 
fairly diverse. There, there, there's a dock, a prison, the whole city, and they tend to be sizable chunks of the city. And all of them are sections of Liberty City as presented in the single player as well. You can go most of the same places outside the city and some of the inside ones. Like you can enter a burger shop, for example, which is, you know, it's like Burger King. Yeah, you know how the Grand Theft Auto games make up their own brand names to parody real life ones. Now, it is still an issue when when you're being chased by the cops in multiplayer. It makes it very difficult to see the other players on the minimap because the cops are these blinking blue red dots and other players are also these same dots. So yeah, and once you have just a few, you know, cop cars or police officers or the like, it really yeah, it's very difficult to see the other players. Now it is great how again, but I should maybe say for a lot of this I'm going to be saying the same things as with 4 because this maintains most of that and it does add some. But yeah, you different players can be wanted or not wanted and have diff different levels of being wanted by the police. The fact that you are near the police and the police are like out in full force fighting a player does not mean that they will attack you and literally like if you die and then you come back to life and there are still plenty of police you're not wanted so you can just you know you can join in you can stand there and watch as all these police you know do their thing yeah I, I personally recommend picking a fight like a melee fight completely unarmed just with at least one cop. That's that's really funny while there are, you know, tons of them around. Now the you can play chicken with you know and and or play with RPGs, which is a lot of fun, you know. If you if you're standing out, you know, on on the street with an RPG and firing at a vehicle, and the vehicle is like swerving to try to avoid being shot whilst firing as they're driving, you know, the RPG player maybe tries to avoid being run over or fire, you know, hit the other player before. It's, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Now. And unlike Max Payne 3, two players can kill each other at the same time without one of them blowing the other up. I was never killed when I'd already, you know, turned a corner. And it's very stable multiplayer. I, when I reviewed the Grand Theft Auto 4, I said that this might be the, you know, some of the last criticisms I make of Max Payne 3 because I was, you know, I had recently stopped playing. At the time, I didn't realize how similar, how much of 4 is still in this. So, yeah, it's it's going to be here in this and in you know, the Battle of Gay Tony when I get to that one. Now. Now, you get to set the rules, and it's it's very open. You you can fiddle around with a lot of different settings. Like you know, I mentioned how there's NPCs, cops, all these things. You can you can change around how much there, how many there are of that, and you know some serve, you know some players choose to turn police off entirely, which 
I, I got used to just checking very early on after joining a match if it had turned police off because that's no fun. Now, the if you drive through a med kit in multiplayer, you will also heal the car, fix the car. This does not have the multiplayer modes from 4 except for free mode deathmatch and team deathmatch. But the. Yeah, the, a lot of the new ones are similar to the old ones. Now, as I've sort of already said, there are not very many players today. It's, it's all but dead. And the, that is even including players on free mode and deathmatch and such. I don't think I saw a single deathmatch server, actually. But, you know, fortunately, any one player can start a free mode server. And, hey, maybe someone will come along to join. <laughs> About half the time, there were one to two servers with five players usually less and about half the time there aren't any at all I yeah I often had to start my own server and a lot of the time no one came along and joined which made me feel very alone there, there was one point where there were eight players total me included but that was only that one time now The there are among the modes are what we call witness protection, where basically the two teams either have to kill or defend a busload of AI and the there is the a, a race a, a still a race mode and in this one you can choose to race on motorcycles and every player has a bat and it's it's checkpoint racing and there May, may well be traffic and basically you can use the bat to knock you know to, to hit the other players it's been compared to road rash I haven't played that so I couldn't say and this is this is how single player races play out as well but the basically the the multiplayer races you can also race with different vehicles and the like. They're they're all in the normal, usual vehicles as well. Now, whenever you start multiplayer, you use the cell phone, and it's one of these games where if you you may end up staring at back staring at the cell phone back in single player, which is quite annoying. Basically, if you if you enter multiplayer, either you're joining, you're you're getting the the server list, or you're starting a server. Actually, I think the start server option. If there are other servers, you will just be joined to one of them. But again, usually for me, it meant starting a server anew, and if you if you do one of those two things and it doesn't work out you can't go to the other one you have to go back into single player and then back I, I don't know why it doesn't just have a open as multiplayer option now the there's a mode called lone wolf biker where it's basically free for all 
with one player being the lone wolf biker and he has to stay alive for as long as possible and the winner is whoever stayed the lone wolf for the longest time now there is a kind of gang war mode where you control sections of the city and it does not only serve to remind you of San Andreas it actually is kind of cool mode there are AI defenders in the different sections along with players and you know the, the sections are clearly marked and each of them I don't remember the percentage count but they they total to 100% and if one team gets 100% they win there's a mode called club business which is a lot like the mafia mode of Grand Theft Auto 4 it's basically eight players to one gang and you you get calls of missions and one player is the road captain and the others have to drive drive a convoy behind him and some of the missions require you to return to the clubhouse which is also the, in single player also the safe house and then there's chopper versus chopper where it's a helicopter and a motorcycle and yeah the, the helicopter has to prevent the motorcycle from reaching the various checkpoints and uh, yeah motorcycle has to make them and then there's of course the free mode which is just free exploration no set mission and you know players can do all kinds of you know playing around in that and and then of course deathmatch and team deathmatch now on this they did thankfully dial down pun intended the cell phone thing it's, Brad Jones the cinema snob recently referred to Grand Theft Auto 4 as cell phone the game and yeah that's that's absolutely correct but it is still the same gray dull city it's not as big as San Andreas it's very average not that good for a Grand Theft Auto game there are a few fixes and new content, but it this is very much a DLC. It's very clearly not, uh, you know, I, this is nowhere near the size of any of the non-numbered titles. You know, San Andreas, Vice City, much, much bigger. You know, I, part of the clue, I suppose, is that they are actually different cities than the you know those two games aren't the same city as Grand Theft Auto 3 whereas this is the same city and I don't see a lot of change to it now and much like with Grand Theft Auto 4 I don't see myself continuing to play now that I've completed it and you know, and reviewing it, it, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, the, these two are easily my least favorite Grand Theft Autos. I should say, I have played Grand Theft Auto 1, 3, by City, San Andreas, and 4. Now, every so often, I would get into the plot, the setting, the characters, but then that dies from the tedious shooting and repetitive gameplay. Unlike 4, there are no moral choices to make. There's not much of like double crossing and you know switching sides going on. And it, it tones down a lot of you know the iconic elements. Some have you know postulated that this and 4 are barely Grand Theft Auto titles because of all the changes you know it's they're trying to be a lot more serious with these and as I said with 4 grit does not have to equal boredom now the email feature helps flesh out the world and characters and there are some ongoing 
stories you know, and, and missions such as dealing with some stolen diamonds just like in the fourth one and as mini games you can arm wrestle play high low cards there's a video game called Cube which is like a 3D Tetris there's air hockey and you know there are the ones from 4 as well now this does not have all of the Never mind, lost my place. This introduces mid-mission checkpoints. So, and and this is only if you choose retry. You know, you get that text message after a mission failed, and you can press that. In four, that would just mean that you didn't have to drive to the source of the mission in order to start again. Here, it actually means you play on from where you got to. And it's only if you choose retry. It's not if you if if you go back to the mission source you will restart the mission I am really glad that they finally put mission, mid mission checkpoints in a Grand Theft Auto game it's not like we've been wanting them since day one you know back in what was 97 or something the first game came out yeah it, it only took them a little over, the, over a decade and I am also really glad I always appreciate it when you get to choose not to just retry the mission from a checkpoint because sometimes you might, you know, maybe you get to a certain point in the mission and you fail and you realize I needed more ammo or armor or the like and so you rather than retry just choose to address that and that was also true of 4 which you know, again, didn't have mid mission checkpoints, but you could bypass having to go back to the mission source. Now, in this, the favors over the cell phone you start out with, but you get to you improve them over the course of the game. So there is still something that you know you earn there. Now, there are really only two new favors these being that you can have a weapon placed in the clubhouse and you can have a bike delivered to you and other than that this has the favors of getting backup getting a weapon ban near you a discount also and yeah that's that's about it so it doesn't have all the favors of four you know where you could also get helicopter pickup and you know have a, a bomb delivered near you that you could then place in a car and detonate at your at your leisure which was awesome they they do still operate on a cool lounge so you can't just use them you know over and over now the if you have a weapon placed in the clubhouse it will have a ton of bullets to it so yeah making that you know so there isn't a lot of effort in filling out your ammo now and the clubhouse slash safe house also allows you to you know put you know store vehicles now and it does it took me ages to get even one more clubhouse in this one where you know in the others yeah now, now. this has gang wars in single player as well and it's just nowhere near as good as in San Andreas you you aren't really conquering turf and you're certainly never called upon to defend your turf it's it's too similar to the the missions you know story side take your pick 
there you know there are no waves to it basically you you go to the start excuse me you go to the start point more bikers join you and they then drive in convoy with you and you're going to either kill a bunch of rival gang members or biker gang members or you stop a van that they're transporting or the like and sometimes when you kill other gang members you kind of have to chase them down and it's kind of awkward because it it doesn't seem like they're really running away and I'm not even sure I, I never really try to just let them get away or something I don't know if that means you fail it or something it seems like the only way to fail it is to to die but yeah it just too too straightforward to you know not that interesting now they do mean once you've completed enough of them you know it starts at 10 a gun will spawn at the safe house and as you complete more of them you know more guns will spawn there and there is some there, there's a side mission called bike theft which yeah you know you go to a, you're sent to a specific place to steal a bike and then you have to return to the clubhouse and you know you might just get in trouble for taking it maybe it's you know maybe you get the cops called on you maybe there are you know maybe a rival gang maybe it's the bike of a rival gang and you you know may have to fight them off for it and you are expected to use a motorcycle throughout this for, for missions and gang wars and the like. And a number of the missions may have you engaging in a friendly race with the other bikers in your game. Now, in missions and gang wars and the like and spare time, you you know the, the other bikers earn experience points and yeah, again, fairly self-explanatory, get better weapons as they go and such. And if any of them die along the way, they will be replaced, guaranteed by warranty. Now, I've already mentioned some driving in convoy. When you yourself are driving, when, when you are leading the convoy, there's this symbol behind the or it makes the, the president Billy Gray and you're supposed to stay in that symbol and it's this really awkward it kind of starts and stops when it's there and yeah it just really highlights the, the changes in speed that you're going and it doesn't help that it's you know others have mentioned the game AI is not <sighs> is not that good it wasn't in 4 either and here it's really highlighted because you're so often with the other gang members and yeah they they tailgate they drive too far they you know they hit each other yeah now there is not a lot to do in this game I already mentioned the calling or even being texted by you know your friends and, and other bikers and such. Much rarer than in four. They they do occasionally still ask to spend time together, but I don't think it happened more than twice in the time it took me to complete the story, so yeah, huge improvement there. And it's not like you aren't really punished if you don't do it. They don't really take favors away the way they would in 4. Now... The... The controls are still not that streamlined. An example is when you have the cell phone out. I don't know why accept and decline aren't on shoot and reload. It's not like you can properly shoot when you have the cell phone out. In fact, 
if you try to use you know those two keys for the cell functions or shoot it will do both but neither very well because if you're constantly shooting while you're using the cell phone that's awkward and yeah you can't shoot while you're so so you're gonna use the other keys and you're like looking on the keyboard wait which key is it? just yeah now this only took me five minutes to install but then I already have Games for Windows Live and the Rockstar Social Club installed and I personally haven't had a lot of trouble with those two but those two services but yeah others have had a lot of problems now there are some elements of this that are as bad as Max Payne 3 walking is much too slow and many elements are certainly worse than other Grand Theft Auto games and Just Cause games including the first Just Cause so chew on that one you can still hotwire and you can like speed it up by pressing you know the up and down forward or backward keys I still I barely have time to realize oh wait is he hot wiring or is, you know was the key there or whatever before it's already too late to do anything about it you can use the ladders and they work much like the typical in a third person shooter there's a lot the, the, the realism is quite high and NPC reactions are much more varied now although it does also really call attention to itself when they don't quite work out because it, it is now much more fluid like they you know yeah so so they might react different ways to different you know I there, there was a guy who was walking and reading a newspaper and I ran and you know a lot of times they were like jump out of the way or something the guy with the, with the paper started running and it just looked so awkward with him running and reading which can't be very safe either and like with 4 there's a lot of content but a lot of it isn't interactive it's TV and internet and yeah these kinds of things now when it rains NPCs will put on raincoats they will run to avoid getting wet use umbrellas you can tap sprint to run faster than if you just hold down the sprint key now the satire in this is very clever and smart it targets everyone equally and yeah it's the, the humor in a Grand Theft Auto game is always good now I really got into the identity of this game surprisingly and I, I, I really should stop being surprised because it happens every time no matter the you know specific identity of one of these and it's always something like really distinct like if you had told me before I started playing this that I would enjoy a biker gang kind of I would not have believed you at all now the like with four San Andreas has more replayability and the, the world is just not inviting or that much fun to do the usual Grand Theft Auto stuff in and the gameplay is less fluid now the graphics are one of the few things that have gotten a lot better the you know the the engine of the graphics much much better it's the gameplay that either hasn't gotten better or has generally gotten worse now the 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 pain spray has now is is now 
distinct from a car wash, like, you know, in, in this and Grand Theft Auto 4, and it again just brings up, I, at this point, what, what is even the point of the car wash? You, I think there's at least one mission in 4 where you're literally asked to use the car wash, but then there's a mission in 4 where you're asked to pick up a brick and throw it through a window, and I didn't do that either for the rest of the time I was playing the game. You know, the paint spray is what gets you, you know, it fixes up the car and it, you know, puts on new color and, and you know, it's called, you know, plates. That actually means that you can escape the cop. I mean, yeah. The, the car wash by itself, I'm not sure, has that much reason to be there. Now, Liberty City is, again, New York, more or less, with the three main islands. It's very authentic, and like in 4, it is the biggest single city. Although, there is more overall, you know, the, the overall area you play in, in San Andreas is bigger. But it is also, the, the city here is also more detailed. Now, you, you know, in order to do well at a mission, you explore, you gather ammo, armor, maybe get a specific vehicle. In this case, that vehicle is usually a motorcycle, but still. And the sections of the city are relatively distinct, but they are all urban, so a bit too similar. Now, some buildings can be climbed via ladders. If you can go on side missions for, you know, cab service, police, you know, fire truck, ambulance, and this, I couldn't find a way to do it. You can still call 911, though, and get different services from that. Now, like 4, this has ragdoll physics, dynamic lighting, water physics, objective physics, and more interaction for, you know, NPCs. Now, you can swim, just not underwater. And that also kind of means that even if you enter the water via vehicle, you know, you can still, you, you can open the door, and if, if you sit there with, you know, with the door closed, you will drown within a few seconds, but it still stands in stark contrast to earlier games where, you know, if you hit the water in a car, you would die. Of course, back then, you know, we're talking before San Andreas, if you hit the water, period, you would drown, but I... I still say there's a nice, you know, middle, yeah, middle ground there. Now, the world is not too controlled, neither by the law nor by the game's engine. I should add, with that, it still is somewhat controlled, you know, it's not complete chaos. So it's yeah, you can you can kind of do more or less what you want to, but the police will respond to it. And without it being like, you know, if you you know, they won't arrest you for just anything and if they, you know, you can escape them and such. Now, 1 minute of real time is an hour of in-game time. They don't use the, the in-game watch that much in the in-game clock this much, that much in this one, sadly, which I still say that's, that's an element that you can really take advantage of, and some of these games have done that. Now, the And, and it is a simulation, not a pre-scripted series of events. 
If you die, you respawn at a hospital, and you're out 10% of your of your current money, topped off at 10 grand. And if you're busted, you lose all guns and ammo. And yeah, so be careful with with either of those. It's yeah, I'm I'm really glad. In spite of all the you know that that it you know in spite of how much easier this and four was made than the early Grand Theft Autos, that there still are those significant consequences. Now, th on the other hand, there is of course the fact that, as before, when you've completed a mission, it will or can at least you can you can turn that off. So at least it allows that. But yeah, usually it'll auto save immediately after completing a mission, taking out the thrill of desperately getting back to your safe house from where the mission ended and you know you might have a little health there might be a long way to go to get there you may have to go through enemy territory man I, re I remember when that was a thing in Grand Theft Auto games that was fun you may you know the cops might still be after you yeah and now the and as usual you can save at the safe house as well and that means sleeping and you know bringing the in-game clock forward by six hours you may have to travel to get a good gun and you know and or a vehicle you can vault as with four you know, as others have pointed out, you move like you're 300 pounds, and in this one, you even stick some in the direction that you were going, like in Max Payne 3. If, you know, when you drive, you know, you run somewhere over, they will bounce off the hood, which, yeah, very nicely realistically like that. On the other hand, when you enter rooms and such, you kind of just shove doors and the like, kind of awkwardly. Now, the animation is very realistic and more detailed, and even more so in this than in 4. And the animations are created on the fly, not pre-scripted, which might explain the guy running with the newspaper and the graphics are very nice for the time the cutscenes are quite well done with angles and cuts and you can still skip them and the camera is free 360 degrees now when you aren't on foot the camera moves very annoyingly and you constantly have to manually adjust if you make a turn and you don't adjust the camera the 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 camera will still be pointing in the direction that it was before the turn I, it baffles me that they did it like this at least in San Andreas you know you just basically had to not touch the mouse because it either steer or adjust the camera too much but here you constantly have to you know re reset it and it's not the smooth kind of camera movement that you do when you're not in a vehicle so yeah it's awkward like that and again you really shouldn't have to manually adjust it now this is a port from console to PC it runs well on my machine which is newer you know it came out after the game came out and it runs Assassin's Creed 3 and Deus Ex Human Revolution without any problems Whereas this, I do have to put it on the lowest setting, and then it'll run pretty fine. Now, there's a new engine built from scratch. It crashes for some, it hardly crashed for me, but 
the first five pages on the Steam forums are pretty much dominated by people who have trouble running it or starting it or the like, one way or another. Now, the map is, you know, great allowing for zoom legend and you can place your own marker and it can coexist peacefully with a marker that the game itself set but it is still annoying that to get the map out at all you have to press escape in order to zoom on it or move it at all you have to press enter and then if you want the legend you have to press tab it really breaks up the flow of just going about the yeah I mean escape Sure, that was how it was before, although at this point it really seems like they should be able to do it differently so you don't so you aren't pausing the game. But the others yeah. And I I feel like the, the little mini map if it could just zoom out some more than it does, maybe like you know maybe you kind of Maybe you bring out the cell and say, okay, GPS, please find me the nearest restaurant, for example, or more likely pay and spray. And it then immediately pick that instead of you having to go all the way out, you know, escape, enter, tab, place the marker, and then back to, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it emulates the experience of real life, you know, stopping the car pulling over, bringing out the map, and trying to find the right place, but in the age of GPS, it seems like, and, and when the game actually allows GPS, it seems like you should be able to do without that. Now, cinematic camera is still an option, and you either choose it as a camera angle, or you hold down the key, which will, you know, focus on the mission target, or it will show multiplayer scores, you know, focus on an object, your, your current objective, show the, you know, your convoy of brothers, you know, what their XP is and what their current gun and next gun is, you know, depending on the circumstances. When you drive fast, you get motion blur. And even when you're just on foot, there are three closeness settings on the camera, and you can always look behind you, and if you look behind you and then press fire, you will immediately, you know, turn and shoot. And you can use this if you don't mind, you know, losing a bullet or two, you can use this to do a, excuse me, a regular 180 degree turn instantly. Now there are the, the targets are color coded for missions red means kill blue means transport or meat or the like and yellow means go now the weather includes rain sunshine fog and there's also nighttime sunny day and the like you can turn on your high beams when you're stealing a car, you might be threatening with the gun. If you have a gun out, you might just be pulling them out. If they're already dead, you'll kind of slide the body out of the driver's seat. And when you look off at something off in the distance, the focus and perspective will kind of pull back. And much like in 4, teeth still really stick out, although less so. Now, your cell phone will get, you know, updates. Of, every time you meet a major character, basically, they will be added to your contact list. Now, you can invite on, you know, for spare time activities, and they can, but again, they don't do it too much. And there are no load times when you're walking in and out of buildings and such, and you can very clearly tell if you're inside or outside, you know, with level of sunshine, for example, and general level of light. Now, 
Near the end, I did, in general, a few times in this, I experienced, you know, loading, and it didn't load all the graphic elements. It happened a lot more in 4, but, yeah, still something. It's especially the, the bike would ever so often hover just above the ground. Now, since 4 was a reboot, there this isn't really in continuity with the older ones, although there are some references and the like. Now, if, if a fire hydrant gets destroyed, it will spray up water and it'll knock down people or you know, it might upend a car, so that's, you know, very cool. The military has been replaced with Homeland Security. And at three stars warranted level, they send out a helicopter for you. And the, the van they come in is armored. Now, when you are wanted, whether it's one star, six stars, or anywhere in between, if the star is like gray, silver. If it's silver, it means they can see you and, you know, are attacking. If you're out of view, the silver will gray and it'll start blinking before they completely forget about you. And there's always this, you know, area which is where they're especially looking for you. And if you leave that area, they won't come looking for you, but police might be entering that area from the other side, so it it doesn't always just lose the cops to drive out of it. You might run into another cop on the other side. And with that, it can still be too easy to lose the cops. The AI is okay. You still have the toll bridge, which you can either just you know, if you're in a hurry, you just drive right through and don't pay and some cops will take note. Or you can slow down, pay the, I think it's $5, and, you know, it depends on whether you're in a hurry and whether police will be, you know, okay or has to be avoided. Now, the... If I was going to play just one Grand Theft Auto game, this on the 4th would not at all be what I chose. It would almost definitely be San Andreas. The police bribes are gone. You can have an enemy in your sights, and it'll it'll show the health and, in you know, if applicable, the armor level, and you might still hit the wall. With, with your bullets, that is, yeah, again, like in Max Payne 3, it's really frustrating when they, yeah, I, again, if I'm in a position where I can't hit the guy that I'm trying to aim at, that's fine, but then don't give me this full readout and make it look like I can hit them if I'm just going to be shooting in a wall. And Grand Theft Auto 4 is really the Assassin's Creed 3 or rather Assassin's Creed 3's Grand Theft Auto 4 of sequels. You know, it, when we had gotten used to so much, so many fun abilities in the non-numbered titles, suddenly one comes along that goes back to basics on a lot of those abilities, and in some cases even eliminates abilities. Now, I didn't really get around to trying it, but I think you can still drive drunk and get drunk in this. There are less features than San Andreas. Now, if you do go, you know, socializing, socializing, you, you know, you pick them up, you choose where to, you know, you may have to pick them up, you choose where to go, you go there, and yeah. In this, unlike Grand Theft Auto 4, you can access the entire map right from the start. Mo motorcycle handling has been upgraded, which is, you know, fantastic thing, because otherwise this would be miserable to play. 
and it does then also worsen the handling of other vehicles since you're a biker and Johnny as he puts it rarely drives a cage and thankfully it hasn't been worsened by that much because while I can appreciate that it is meant to you know you're meant to use motorcycles it's still it would really suck if almost every vehicle in the game had bad handling but as it is it's about a third of the time where it's you know bad handling and we're talking like skidding slow response times stuff like that and as in Grand Theft Auto 4 everybody's brakes must be out because they all run you over including cops who aren't even you know going for you basically if you approach the road make sure that you're you know keep moving away from the vehicle even as it's slowing down because they will still run you over if you're not walking far enough away now and you know again they will stop immediately after so it's not like they're maliciously you know running you over now you can hang on to the cars and the like although you know as they're driving although you usually very quickly be forced to let go there are no planes that you can use anyway no tanks no bicycles flying is bad like in four I, I say again on the plus side this one does not force you to fly unlike four but the flying is more involved than the driving and while real life flying is harder than real life driving both are you know real life driving is much more involved than it is in Grand Theft Auto games and if you're gonna you know take that one first step then you really should go the whole way I mean you know you can't do any cool tricks using the clutch you know the the gears and again I'm not saying that I want that but if you're gonna go in that direction yeah but yeah uh, helicopter flying should not be this complicated in a game that isn't a flight simulator and again just cause both one and two do fantastically much simpler flying basically the controls for flying are the same as you know you have the the four keys and then you have let's go with up and down and up and down if you're on a motorcycle it means like leaning up or down you know and on a helicopter yeah so it's it's much much easier you don't have to be you know on on a jet it's speeding you know, it's it's the throttle basically. Now, as as far as I recall, it has been a while since I've played those. Now, the the helicopter, the the arm armed helicopter in this, which is especially, you know, it's very present in multiplayer and free mode. Is armed with two miniguns and, or you know, miniguns on both sides. And you know, limited ammo because it's a Grand Theft Auto game, and now explosive bullets, which makes it a lot easier to blow stuff up. And if you hold down the brake key, it will you know give you a first-person aim. Of, excuse me, which otherwise you have to cycle to the vision modes for. Now, and on the in the airport, planes are always taking off you cannot affect them you know you can you can get in front of one and it'll like push you but you can't stop them or damage them or anything now when you shoot from a vehicle you can go completely 360 degree free aiming and from a vehicle you can use an, a submachine gun a pistol a throwable you can even cycle which of them you use while you're in the car now and you can literally like make a full 180 turn in a vehicle 
and never stop aiming directly and shooting clearly at whatever you're trying to shoot at. So that's that's great. For that, the the camera works great, but again, it could do that without sucking for turns and such. Now, cars bounce and bikes certainly flip from the tiniest bump in the road sometimes, not always. And that gets really frustrating. And while someone said of the of Grand Theft Auto 4 that when it's rainy, you, it's basically impossible to drive. That, I didn't find that to be true of that, but definitely this. It's, yeah, the, the driving gets ridiculously unresponsive and over, you know, overreaction. Yeah, it, it turns too far and the like. Now. Now, you can bail out of the moving vehicle and it will cause fall damage as you, you know, roll along the, the road until you, yeah. And I've experienced a car breaking down from, you know, taking too much damage, like if you run into too many things, without exploding, but, you know, the radio will cut out and it just will not drive anymore. So yeah, again, kudos for the realism there. And, you know, you can use boats, ground vehicles, you know, cars, motorcycles, helicopters, there are various different kinds of almost all of these. Now, the, you know, the character will sometimes enter the, the completely wrong car, like you can be facing, you can be standing right by the driver's side or seat in, you know, by a vehicle. He will still walk several over to a different car. And sometimes while he will go for the right one, he'll keep going back and forth between which side he'll go in, costing you precious seconds. And, I mean, really, if, if the game is having trouble figuring out, you know, if it... If it has to choose and it doesn't have very good intuition, just put that choice back in the hands of the player. Just, you know, have us, like, aim at the vehicle that we have to enter and then press enter. That would solve it completely. Now, there are less guns and cars than San Andreas. Now, you... You can fight melee, and you know you can dodge, block, disarm, counter, but you feel like you have to be too close, and it's very awkward. Now, in addition to just unarmed, you can also use a, a knife or a bat to attack with. To heal, you you know save your progress. You eat, you call for a paramedic, or you use a med kit. Now. You can blind fire from cover, and there is no RPG style upgrading of guns. Now, like in 4, you can pick up and toss small items. I, I realized that completely by accident in this one. I didn't realize that, you know, I thought that I would be just attacking with my hands, but then he picks up and yeah, I think that's how it happened anyway. I still don't really see much of a point to this feature. It feels like they just, they were showing off or seeing what they could make work. I got ammo for the pistol and even submachine gun very fast. It's in part because most of the people I shoot have, you know, leave a gun behind. And about half the time, I left a mission with more ammo than... I entered it with. Now, even on the pistol, there does not appear to be very much recoil. And you can fire, you know, accurately longer than it seems like you 
should be able to realistically. Now, and since you, when you just shoot someone, you can knock them down with just the bullets, making it very, way too easy to kill. Like even, you know, SWAT team with full armor, one shot might knock them down and then you just finish them off while they're trying to get back up. You can even do a bunch like this, like, you know, fire, you know, shoot over all of them. Most of them are down, just finish them off one by one like that. It's, yeah. And, and, and sometimes it can be difficult to tell if someone is dead. I mean, thankfully, if they had a gun, they will leave, you know, that will be left behind and that glows orange. But otherwise, yeah, it can be kind of difficult to tell. Now, the, if you're too close to an enemy, you will do this awkward pistol whip like in Hitman 2. Yeah, that's just, it's awful. It, you know, you're, you're trying to shoot, he, he pistol whips instead. Now, explosive barrels, you can't always tell if they are the kind that explode. And sometimes, even if they do explode, they don't do that much damage to the enemy. Not, not as bad as in 4, but still. And there's less blood and gore than in, you know, earlier than the Dodos. There's a manual zoom, which I still wish you could just set to, you know, automatic, where when you focus aim, you can, like, use the scrolling wheel, mouse wheel, to zoom in a little more, and the zoom will be, you know, dependent in severity on, you know, the type of gun. Like, a, an assault rifle is going to have much more zoom than a pistol. Now, and whether you're in a vehicle, or the other person is, or, you know, both of you, you can shoot someone, you know, if one of you is in a car, you can shoot very comfortably the other guy. Shoot them through the window, yours or theirs. Or the, yeah, so that that's great. Now, the assault rifle, I think, has around 530 bullets total, which, you know, is at least not... I, the pistol and the SMG have around, like, 1,200 bullets which is pretty ridiculous as a, yeah. It, again, it feels like you should be able to run out realistically. Anyway, again, most of the people you kill, you can just pick up their gun, so. Now. The, this adds an automatic pistol. You still have the MP5, the Mini Uzi, and this one also adds a jackhammer and a sawn off. And the jackhammer. Yeah, just just ridiculously effective shotgun. And yeah, you can. Both of the these new shotguns are really, really efficient in destroying vehicles and the like. And yeah, you got to be careful that you don't accidentally make it blow up when you're too close to it. And the wonderful thing about the sawn off is that you can use it while you're on a motorcycle as well. And yeah, you do, you know, spend most of this game on a motorcycle, and and it also only has 160 bullets for the shotgun in that case. So that's again, that's thankfully much less. Again, it, I, I'm of the opinion that you should feel like you can run out of bullets in order to have weight and be more exciting. But yeah, you know, you can run circles around enemies firing the shotgun, the, the sawn off, and it's use, useful against other bikers as well. Yeah. Now.
and and it really it changes up the dynamic of the shooting, which really is as it should. You know, that's something that a new gun should do. Now, there's also snipers. There's a grenade launcher, which it's they didn't have to mess it up is is what i think they basically it takes a while for the projectile to explode so it's not that useful for you know it's it's harder to tell where it'll be when it blows up it bounces so it's not you know you it's the kind of thing you know you you want to be the T-800 firing, you know, right, you know, destroying cop cars one by one with these, these grenades, you know, it's probably just not going to happen. And with its inclusion, the RPG is rare in multiplayer, so yeah. And you're also given a pipe bomb, it's essentially the same as the grenade. And you, you know, if you just press if you aren't focus aiming, he will drop it at his feet, which is a real wake-up call the first time you accidentally do this. And in, if you don't hold down the attack button for long enough, he might do an underhand throw. And again, I just put that on a completely different key or remove it entirely, because that should never happen. I accidentally blew up a car I was hiding behind. Yeah. Now, and then in the when when you're in a vehicle, he does basically just drop it, you know, throw it off to the side, and you know, for that it makes sense to just drop it. And you do also still have the Molotov, which is still great. There are one to three guns per gun type, and it's. You know, it's it's your basic third-person shooter setup. You know, you can crouch, strafe. You know, the you know when you aim, you get the, the target readout, and you can focus aim. You know, there's there's cover. Now, when you use cover, however, there is this delay I think I guess it's just like a half a second maybe maybe almost a full second between you pressing you know pulling the trigger and him actually firing and this always messes up the time you know usually usually you don't even use the cover because it's basically usually, you know you'll just crouch or just find a place to stand where the you don't really need to use cover to be in cover and yeah, it's just, I mean, literally what will happen if you use cover for, you know, for the first 10 minutes that you actually use, you know, until you realize you shouldn't use cover is you see the other guy stand up and shoot, and they're like, okay, this is where I shoot. So you take aim, and then you press the trigger. And the moment you press the trigger, your character gets up. Meanwhile, the other guy has just, you know, ducked again. And you miss, and it's, I, I don't understand why focus aim doesn't make you get out of cover ready to shoot. You know, it, why would you use focus aim if you weren't ready to shoot anyway? And it, it's the same for vehicles. And the worst part is they clearly knew how to do it because they did it right when you're a passenger in a vehicle. Then you, you know, focus aim you stick your head out and you're ready to shoot so yeah and in this you know you can and, and in four as well you can be you know in a helicopter and fire your own gun again passenger and you can be in the back of a truck in the back you know from the back of the truck I experienced you know you can't really shoot anywhere but behind the the truck so if you try to aim anywhere else you know the the gray if the the reticle will turn gray and that again I wish it would do that for when you otherwise hit the wall now if you are 
not, you know, if you're not right up against the cover and you press cover, you will roll into cover, and that can be useful. Now, but but yeah, on the whole, the third person shooting is just much less fun than it was in San Andreas, which was the first Grand Theft Auto game to have proper third person shooting. Now, you know, with comfortable aiming and uh, yeah. Now, the police will not shoot you if it's just a minor crime, and yeah, in general, their their response is proportional to your crime. Now, in this, you do. You are only doing one mission at a time. There's no waiting to be called, or you know, waiting for a certain time to, you know, for when that that you can then you know attend a meeting or the like. Now, or you know, a, a job interview, as it were. Grand Theft Auto 4, bringing you all the excitement of trying to land a decent job. Yeah. Now, your mission objectives will be like, you know, kill someone, move something somewhere, steal something from someone, or just, you know, pick it up in, yeah. I mean, there, there's one mission where you have to go to the airport and transport a drug mule, you know, on your motorcycle, which is fun. But, and really, the looking at them objectively, the mission, the missions aren't that repetitive in design, but they just they feel it. Now, as usual in Grand Theft Auto, for a Grand Theft Auto game, you, you know, before starting a mission, you, you have to prepare, you have to really apply yourself, and you may still need some luck, but as before, it is still easier than before. Now, and it doesn't help that some missions have med kits and armor along the way, so, you know, both taking down realism and difficulty. And, yeah, as I was playing this and 4, I was missing aspects of Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, San Andreas. You know, wasn't missing... yeah. And I haven't been missing 4 so far since I played that. And I, again, don't think I'll miss this. Now, that brings me to the length. A typical Grand Theft Auto game is 33, 36 hours, some, somewhere along those lines to complete. This one took me seven for the missions. I also spent eight and a half just running around doing other stuff, completing side missions and such. Bringing me up to 71.25% completion. Yeah, and I mean, they realized, they, they said like 10 to 15 hours, but that's still very, very little, even for a DLC. And I spent about 16 and a half hours of multiplayer, and I played this over two weeks to properly, you know, let everything sink in and try to experience every situation. Now, like San Andreas, the music and ads and such are, you know, randomized in order and news broadcasts relating to the plot will play at appropriate times. And, you know, there's, it's a lot of licensed music by famous artists. And I found I liked some music on every single station. And even as a passenger in multiplayer, you can choose the radio for yourself. So, yeah, it includes Latin, electro, 
Laszlo returns pathetic as ever. In this one, he has an illegal immigrant working as an unpaid intern for him. And the dude barely speaks English. And he's like, there's this bit where he goes on about lesbians, how lesbians shouldn't marry because it ruins the fantasy. Married people are boring. And uh, yeah. And there's a, the, there's a radio station for your own music, and it is hosted, so that's quite cool. There's rock, heavy, disco. There's a conservative talk radio. Alt-rock, pop, Eastern European, dance. There's one that's like an ASMR radio channel. And where 4 had 21 channels, this only had 13, including your own. Plus your own, sorry. And there are not that many new ones. This does bring in a Howard Stern parody, Martin Sirius, who employs a black transvestite to, you know, as, as pure tokenism. And she, she admits that she hates herself all the way to the bank. And yeah, again, you know, lots of lesbians and just shock jock kind of stuff. It's it's a pretty good Howard Stern parody. Now, I suppose, yeah, that pretty well covers it. So, yeah, I mean, I can't really recommend it. I guess if, if you have the option to just play it and you're just sitting there just hammering it out in one, I mean, Again, the characters are fun, and the story, although it's straightforward, it has some cool stuff to it, and you really do get into the biker identity of this one. But the multiplayer is essentially dead, and just, yeah, even, even I mean, I got this um, you know, at a discount, because I, I, I hound the you know, discount and and sales and such. Even so, I would still not, like, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it was there and then that's kind of it, but yeah, and again, I, I almost definitely won't be replaying it or even, like, you know, yeah. So that's my two cents. I've read other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.